So it is currently a winter storm. Earlier it was minus 35 degrees Celsius, which is deadly. Literally, between 1985 to 2012, they found that around five and a half million deaths were attributed to being cold, whereas only around 300,000 were attributed to being too warm. But the survival skills necessary to survive the freezing are so fascinating. So we wanted to ask the question, how can you survive freezing to death? Most of the information we share with you right now comes from a resource I know that you think about when you think about us, which is the US Marine Corps. It's also spelled US Marine Corps, which is something we don't want you to become. It is their winter survival instructions, and Marines are trained to survive extremely cold climates. So this is the order of things you need to do in order to stay alive. The first and most important part of surviving in the cold is attitude. So apparently this is the most important aspect of staying alive, and I think you can only really practice it in actual life or death situations, but you need to hold on to and really focus on your will to live. You need to think about your friends, think about your family, think about a nice warm fire and a burger, like I don't know, anything but this. And that is an important thing to remember. If you're with someone, you need to help encourage them to also want to stay alive. Before we get to the survival techniques, here are three simple tips to stay warm. Number one, try and minimize the amount of skin you have exposed to the cold and the wind. So if you like wearing your hat all trendy like this, you're doing it wrong because you're exposing a lot of extra skin. Number two, really try and cover your head and neck. And number three is actually a little counterintuitive, which is to shed layers if you're going to do hard work because you'll sweat and you don't want to do that, which we'll get to later. Obviously, we need to find a shelter. So a couple quick tips. Look for an area that's not too windy so you won't be picking up a lot of breeze. You also don't want to be near anything that's too steep of a slope because there's a risk of an avalanche. And then scope out for dead trees. You want to not be near them because they're a hazard for falling over on you. Take a look around and find some dead trees that you can use as firewood. You also want to scope out a water source that'll be nearby where your shelter is. And then ultimately you need an open field that you can create a signal fire for help. The easiest shelter to make at the beginning is a horseshoe shape at least three feet tall and the length of your body so that you could lie down in it. You want to locate the wind direction and build it so that the horseshoe is against it so that the wind obviously isn't coming into your shelter. You're going to dig until you see the ground before you start making your structure because your body heat is eventually going to melt the snow beneath you and you don't want the shelter that you've made to cave in on itself. The third thing you'll need is fire because warmth will obviously be essential. Before ever heading out into the winter woods, you should always bring with you waterproof matches or a lighter. If you didn't bring those, you can hopefully find a convex lens that you can use the sun's rays to concentrate onto tinder to start a fire. If you don't have any of those, you can use a live bendable stick with hopefully a wire, this is what the Marine Corps say to do, to create a bow. You then will take this another stick and put it into a log with a hole. And you're gonna literally go like this to create friction. You've maybe seen this in movies to start a fire. They say that's the best way when in the winter. We tried and we could not do it. We couldn't even get close. So please, for God's sakes, going anywhere near the cold or potentially being trapped in the cold, bring waterproof matches or a lighter. You wanna build a fire, obviously, near your structure, dig to the ground again and build the fire on the ground. Not on the snow, because it will melt the snow and go out. If it's too windy, you want some wind, but if there's too much wind, you can build a wall of snow to help break a lot of the wind so that you can actually build your fire more easily. And if you find rocks, don't put them around your fire like you maybe do when you're camping, because those wet rocks have moisture and the heat can actually make them explode and the steam coming off them can also put out your fire. A TP formation for your fire is great for concentrated heat, which is important for boiling water, which is the next step. We're also going to want to make a fire in a big open field, which you're going to put evergreens on top of during the day to create a lot of smoke. And that is your signal fire to hopefully tell someone to get you out of here. The next thing you'll need is water, but never eat freshly fallen snow. It might seem tempting because essentially there's water everywhere, but do not do it. It's so much energy on your body. It will dehydrate you and it is extremely dangerous. You need to melt the water before consuming it. Not worth it. I'm freezing. If you have a bag with you, you're going to want to put snow in the plastic bag, seal it tightly, and put it within your clothes. And as you walk around, your body heat will melt snow and melt ice as you walk so you can drink throughout the day. If you are near a stream like this, you can collect water, but you're going to need to bring it to a rolling boil when back at your campsite in order to be safe from Giardia lambia, a parasite that I've actually had before. And lastly, if you are near the sea, sea ice when frozen, if it is blue and has curved edges, it means in fact it probably has lost its 
salinity because sea ice loses salinity over time and you can melt that down and drink it. If the sea ice is gray, do not bother melting it down because the salt is still in it and you'll not be able to drink it. For every two cups of snow boiled, you will end up with half a cup of water. If you have access to ice, melt that first because ice has a higher concentration of water than snow. One important fact is that thirst is not the only indicator that you should be drinking water. If you get the chance to drink, do it, because things like dehydration and hypothermia can actually make you feel like you're not thirsty. So if you have access to water, drink it now. So you can survive without food for several weeks, but you're obviously gonna need it for energy, to build things, and to get things done. So look for where birds are pecking into trees, because you might be able to find bugs that you can eat or boil. Look under the grass for things like dandelion or stinging nettle, which are good in sources of iron, and then look for grasses and pine, which will help for fiber. And there's also a layer under the bark of trees that's edible called the cambium layer. So peel that back for a rich vitamin source. So you are going to need to kill animals for calories. We're talking raccoons, skunks even, possums, and there's an acronym to remember what to do to kill them and it's sick. S-I-C-K for strangle, impale, crush, or knock. You're gonna wanna use the smoke from your fire to cover yourself in the scent so that the animals cannot smell you when they're hunting them. Look for old mature trees, that's where raccoons can be, near streams and beaver dams, you can find mink and of course beavers. And you're going to want to, every single time you see an animal, potentially think about how you could lure it, and kill it. The next part is kind of gruesome, so no images, just listen. What you're gonna do is use a knife and cut around the anus hole. Make sure you're not puncturing the intestines. You do not want to eat those. You're gonna get rid of those. You're gonna cut up from the anus to the chest cavity and then remove the skin. You're gonna be doing all of this to the best of your ability. Take out the heart and the lungs and the liver. If there's white spots on it, you're not gonna eat it. But if there aren't, you're gonna take those three things and eventually eat them. Remove the guts separately and get rid of those. You're not eating the guts. Then you're gonna boil the meat the brain, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys. And again, you're gonna boil these things to cook them because after you're also gonna drink the broth because there'll be lots of nutrients in that as well, along with water. In the winter when trying to survive, never cook meat or animal in any other way but boiling it. This is how you'll conserve the most calories for yourself. So the winter is obviously treacherous and I absolutely hate it. I, on the other hand, love winter. <laughs> so because of this video, we were curious what you guys feel. We actually made another video where we debate against each other with science whether winter is good or awful. And we'll leave the link over here that you can click on or in the description to check that out. But we wanna know what you think. And if you haven't seen our ASAP science video about what actually happens to your body when you freeze to death, click on it over there. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Greg and Mitch. Let's get it to a milli. Let's get it to a milli <laughs> subs, even though we've been losing them because we haven't made videos in forever. But we're back. Bye.